All right, let's go over bi-weekly contest 140. <clears throat> so the first problem in, in this one was minimum element after replacement digit sum, uh, which was just asking to replace each element in nums with the sum of its digits. So, you know, you can just think, uh, I'm not even going to go over this one. Like, it's just very over the nums. And... Oh, uh, oh, you want to return the minimum element in the nums after our replacement. So you want the minimum digit sum. So then this is the digit sum. The V is equal to my digit sum. And the while x is greater than 0, just use modulus 10 to get the last digit. And then keep dividing x by 10. And that will just sum up um, all the digits. And then you calculate the minimum digit sum. Okay, so that one's really straightforward. This one um, maximize the total height of unique towers. You're given an array maximum height where, yeah, this denotes the maximum height the ith tower can be assigned. Your your task is, is to assign a height to each tower so that the height of the ith tower is a positive in integer and does not exceed maximum height i. No two towers have the same height. Okay. Um, yeah, so no two towers have the same height. So the, the strategy for this one is just start from the, the one that has the... Um, start from the start from the smallest one, okay. So start from the two, and then so sort this in increasing order, and then start from the two, and then give that one a one, because a one is going to be under two. Then you when you go to the next one, it's a three. So give the three a two, and then give the next one, which is a three, a three, which is still going to be less than or equal. And then give the four or four, and that way you're you're making sure that you know you do that, and you just need to return the sum of that. So this one you sort, so do ten and fifteen. So just do uh oh right, right sorry don't don't sort it in ascending order. You want to sort it in a descending order because you want the maximum possible total sum of the of the tower highs. Um, so you want to start from the fifteen. So you, you know, take a 15 for the 15, and then you can take a 10 for the 10. And then for this one, you can take a 2 and then a 1, and then you can't take anything. So this one I'm not going to explain. I'm just going to go over the code. I think it might be explanatory enough. So you sort in as descending order, and then you go through these integers. You set your current to infinity originally up here, some large number. And you set cur to be the min of uh, basically cur and x. That is because your height can't be above x, um, and if cur is less than x, it's going to have to be equal to, equal to that. Oh, no, it will only change if basically x is less than cur. You have to like update cur. If cur is less than or equal to 0, you return negative 1. Otherwise, you increment by cur, and you decrement cur for the next one, so this will um, just give you the maximum total height you can distribute. Okay. For this one, find the lexicographically smallest valid sequence. So you're given two strings, word one and word two. And so string x is called almost equal to y if you can change at most one character in x to make it identical to y. A sequence of indices seek is called valid if the indices are sorted in ascending order concatenating the characters at these indices in word one in the same order results in a string that is almost equal to word two um, return an array of size word le length word two dot length representing the lexicographically smallest valid sequence of indices. If no such sequence of indices exists, return an empty array. Um, so yeah, you have to, it's, the array you're returning has to be the lexicographically smallest array, um, the indice, which is represented the indices. So like, they give an example here, so VBC, A, and ABC. So, they choose 0, 1, 2 because you can you can change the V to an A, and then B and C will match here. And then they have like this example where it's 1, 2, 4, and 
some more um, examples. Oh, I don't have a whiteboard. Okay. Um, need to draw this one. This is a. Okay, so let me draw an example. So let's say you have word of one is Let's say word two is is this, and you can hold on, uh, hold on, it's two. Right, let's say word two is this, so you might say your best option is to go here and then change this to an A, so then you have an AA. And then, well, you can't do that because then you can't get the C. So you can't do that. So maybe your best option is to have to take this A, take this A, and then change this to C, change the earliest B to C, and then take this A. And then you have a matching, and this is the smallest isographical ordering. So my idea is, to track this the suffix here and track like um how far it matches in the word two so just i just use a pointer i think called j and so like j starts out as being i think four which represents the length of word two so what you're gonna create is you're gonna create this uh, suffix thing and it's just gonna it's gonna match. So for instance, does it match here with this A? Um, yeah. So it's gonna decrease to three. It's not gonna change here. This A it doesn't match. So remain a three, remain a three. So it's gonna remain a three all the way to the end here. So that's kind of like how that is because you can only match the a you don't have the c so you can't match anything else in terms of the suffix um, matching in this array so then when you loop over this array just match prefixes greedily so i want to match a a c a so when i'm at index zero i have a match for this so now i'm going to be index zero and then I get a match for this A uh, at index uh, 2. And then, and then by putting that one there, then I go to the next one. And so now I'm looking for, I'm looking for, uh, a j equals two, right? Or in other words, the third element in in word two. So, um, so if I'm looking for word two, but uh, I'm at uh, index equals three, where the character of this is like b, which doesn't equal to the character of the word. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in suffix of i plus 1. And OK, well, that's equal to 3, right? That means it it matches up to the third index. That means if I can match up to the third index, uh, I'm good to go.
And so can I will, if I have j equals two, and let's say I'm gonna change this character, I'm just going to increase it by one and go to three. So then I'll just say if this three and this three uh, interacts, uh, um, Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, you could just say how much of the suffix I match. So let's say, let's get a bigger example. Like, let's say this, and let's say I match the suffix of this string. This is word two, and let's say I've matched the suffix. So we're able to match this one. So this is zero, one, two four, five, six, seven. So I'm able to match up to maybe the fourth one, okay? So I'm able to match up to the fourth one. I need to be able to match these three because I can always change this character. So I need to be, have already matched this prefix if I if this suffix is matched up to this index. And so you can always check that by just taking your current value, which is, uh, I think your current value is, three and then just say well three plus four is equal to seven so like if you have some index in the array you're going to take this um i here and this would be some like this would be the current j so you take the j plus and then you'll take the suffix matching but you're going to look one more to the right um because you want to make sure this is matched one more to the right and then if this is equal to like the length of word two, then I believe it works. And so if it's equal to seven, if it wasn't equal to seven, that means maybe I'm only matching like B A B, something like that, and that doesn't work. Um, I'm gonna check how I implemented this. So. The very first part is it creates the suffix matching thing and it sets this one to m and it just goes starting from the back and starting from j equals m and then basically if word one match with word two it's going to match the suffix kind of in reverse order and just keep documenting j and saying hey i have a suffix here that's equal to this j um which means that this is how many uh it um it has match okay um well this is how i chose to implement it but i could just say like how many it match so i could say in minus j so like it would be plus one so uh, th uh, this would be the length of matching i think that's actually better that's not uh, okay so i did a little different than what i just explained um but this should give me the length because if n is seven and j is like six it will give me zero which is true but if it's match one of the characters um um Oh, no, 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 no. It's equal to M originally. So, so, yeah, okay. No, no, no. Just think of it like this, actually. If J is M, that means you haven't matched anything, so this would be equal to zero. But if J is M minus one, it matches one, and so on. And so you have the length of the matching, and now you're just going to track the index of what you matched so far. And so if they're equal, you can match the prefix. And increment j uh, else if you're gonna check you're gonna take suffix i plus one and then it will be plus j um plus j right so if uh, j is zero um so it'll be the length of the suffix match and j is the length of the prefix match so if it's zero you know so on so on but then you can add one and so if that is 
greater than or equal to m, then you do this and you set the flag. So when you set the flag from henceforth, it will only match like this. It won't skip another character. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, so uh, okay, so I just changed it very slightly. I I guess I was doing something different with suffix before. But I'm just gonna have it track the length of the suffix match. Um, so I hope that's clear. I um, and then this problem: find the occurrence of the first almost equal substring. Um, so you're given two strings s and pattern. A string x is called almost equal to y if you can change at most one character in x to make it identical to y. Return the smallest starting index of a substring in S that is almost equal to pattern. So it's similar to the other one, um, but for this one, you just want to find the first subarray where it only differs by one character. So if it didn't differ by one character, you could just use Z algorithm, Knuth Morris Pratt algorithm, um, rolling polynomial hash, or rolling hash. You could use, um, or also called Reb and Carp, you could use like almost any string matching algorithm. So it was just like a string matching problem. So if you have a string or a sequence and you say, oh, I have a string or a sequence, and let's say you want to match it to this, you match it to this string at this location, you're going to return that index. So that's how it normally works. But the difference here is that you can change one of the characters. So instead of like doing this, um, you can think of it like a little different. You can think of it as you have your string. You have your original string, and then it matches like partially here, um, where this is like size n1. And let's say we need, we need n1 plus n2 to equal to m, and let's say m is length of pattern. Well, um, n1, n2 plus 1 has to be going to equal to m. Or equal the plus one because one of the characters you can change. So what I mean is like you take this string and then you have this bit here, and then you change this character, but then you match this substring here in two. And so this n1 plus n2 plus one, I'll write it down again, n2 plus one has to be greater equal to the length of the pattern. That means you're able to match. So this one here, you can generate um, pretty easy using Knuth, Morris, Pratt, or Z algorithm. And then how do you generate the, uh, the one that will match uh, the second half? You just have to reverse the string and reverse the pattern, because then it will match this suffix. So then you have this here from this one. And if you write out the indices, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you say suppose you're matching right here, and suppose you're matching a length of two, and let's say m is five. So then you say, okay, I need to match. If I'm matching a length of two, I'm matching these indices. So let's say this index I can change. So I need to check this in reverse direction if it's matched with like the end of the pattern. That is, if this is A, B, C, D, E, that the A, B is matched here in the original string and the D, E is matched here, but going like backwards. So like that means that this section might be A, B, G, D, E or something, right? Um, and so in the actual string that is, uh, I'm not, I'm not really like explaining the algorithm, so there's a few things I'm assuming knowledge of here. No, it's, uh, okay. It, uh, yeah, get back into it. Okay, so how do you find the index? How do you, how do you figure out the indices? Um, <clears throat> well, this index corresponding to the, the other one is zero, one, two, three. So this corresponds to the three index for the for the reversed um, for everything reversed. So you need the 
you need the prefix of the third index plus the suffix of the three index plus one has to be greater than or equal to five. Um, and in this scenario, how do you get this suffix three here? Uh, just look at this. Um, so see how you are this far along. So you know that um, that you have a length of string which is in, and then you you also will know that you um. you've already processed uh, some number um, from M that is as well. So like as I increases, um, this needs to go look this way, I think. But no, one thing you have to subtract is you have to subtract, I think, M, the length of the pattern. So, oh wait, that, that's not gonna work, is it? Uh, I can't remember how I did it now. Thought I did that. Maybe I did something different. Well, okay, no. In the reverse string, the 10 is a zero, and this is a, a one, this is a two, this is a three, this is a four, right? So, You want to check with the three, you want to check the four. So the four would be n minus m, which is 11 minus five, which is already going to give you six. But then you have to minus the three, which will give you three. Okay. Mm, I guess plus one to give you the four. Yeah, okay, I think, okay, hold on. I think I have a better way to go through this. So let's say you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, and then just label zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you are at some index, if you're at some index, some index, some index here, like whatever. Maybe you're at uh, this index, right? So if you're at this index, or let's say you're actually at this index. If you're at this, this index, then where do you look from the reversed one? For the reversed one, you want to look at in minus zero i think yeah i think you just want to look here no that's not true you don't want to look here you want to look like somewhere here that way um that way it's representing the reverse no but yeah if you're looking here and length is five that means you're covering these indices so you're covering this part of the ray. Um, okay, actually, I don't rem remember how I did this. Okay, I <laughs> figured out what I did now. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot. I guess I might be hungry. Um, but I'm going to keep this. Even though I messed up, I'm going to like keep this in here. It's just, um, just show. So this is what I did to actually derive this. So I came with this example. A D B A B A E A D E K 
KL and I say I want to match my pattern is A, B, C, D, E. So you can see the match happens here. And you can find the match based on the prefix 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's going to try up to, so the last one it can try is right here. Um, that's the last one it can try. It has five characters. Like that, it can't try. So it can try everything, each series of five characters up to that. So these five, those five, and so on. And so what you can say is you can say it can try up to, since this is 12, it's 12 minus 5, which is 7. So it tries up to 7. Right? Um, and then if you reverse this string, you do L, K, E, D, A, B, A, B, A, L, K, E, D, A, B, A. A, B, A, B, A, D, A. Okay, so that is the reversed. And so how this is going to work for the reversed is that if I'm matching this string in the reverse, I would look here. This is the reverse of that string. Right, so each time I try matching. So if I try to match this part right here, that corresponds to uh, this part right here. So as you can see, this match is minus m. So it starts out as 12 minus 5, which is 7. So it's going to start out here at the 7. And it's going to keep decreasing as i increases um, as I go through here. So if i here is equal to 5, notice it's at this 2. Well, 7 minus 5 is 2. So yeah, that's kind of how I <clears throat> derived it now, um, and kind of how I thought of it. Um, so yeah, so then you can look at this exa this example as well, and you you use the you you have a z algorithm implementation, and then you use the z algorithm to create based on the pattern. Uh, you just do the normal way you use the z algorithm. Then I just reverse the pattern, reverse the string, and then run a z algorithm on that one, and then I create a new z array. Um, where I truncate the beginning just to make it easier to work with the indices down here based on my derivation. And so just do plus n plus 1, so it removes the, the little dollar sign character as well and removes the pattern from the prefix. So this would be your z array. And then you can go through your z array um, and then just go all the way to n minus m, i is less than or equal. And if this plus, if the z1, i plus z2, and then this is uh, the the indices those derived, plus 1 is going to go m, then you return the index because you have a match there. Um, okay, that's the pretty much explanation. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's it for those.